no, I'll, I'll give an introduction. All right. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Sulakshana, host for this webinar on behalf of Wadwani Foundation National Entrepreneurship Network. As we begin the session, I would like to take you through the phenomenal job that WFNEN is doing in supporting startups, early stage and growth stage entrepreneurs, and SMEs to grow their business. They provide a great free mentoring and learning platform those who come register at wfnen.org and connect them to experienced and expert mentors along with Investor Connects. The mechanism is a very straightforward approach with goal-based, time-bound and structured mentoring. Enrich yourself connecting to 400 plus mentors from various fields of work and make a difference. As we begin, I am so pleased to be with you and to have the chance to introduce our speaker Srinivas Kolipara. Srinivas is the founder of Chief Operating Officer of T-Hub, India's fastest growing startup engine, catalyzing innovation, scale and deal flow. A thought leader with in-depth knowledge of the startup ecosystem, he has successfully built a strong community that includes startups, corporate incubators and accelerators, investors, government agencies and other startup ecosystem players. Under his stewardship, T-Hub has emerged as a full to reckon with in the startup ecosystem in India. And his initiatives have put Hyderabad on the global map as one of the fastest growing and most dynamic startup communities in the country. T-Hub helps innovative startups to scale through India's largest incubator, customized uh, corporate innovation programs and international market access programs. As we begin, request participants to mute audio appliances. After the presentation, we would have a discussion session of around 20 minutes with Srinivas would answer your questions. So please send me relevant questions over chat, which would be answered at the end of the session. I would love to have your feedback on today's session. Your input and suggestions for future sessions are invaluable to me. So please give your feedback on the poll and survey. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming Srinivas. Over to you, Srinivas. Thank you, Sulakshana. Um, good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm going to be going over the basics of the Startup India policies. Um, as I'm sure you know, uh, the government's been working on making life easier for startups uh, throughout the country. The, uh, this is going to be just an overview session, simply because there are so many policies that apply. Um, I'll go over the, the basics, and of course, during the question and answers, we can go into more detail on some of the areas that you have questions on. So before I start, I wanted to tell you a little bit about uh, T-Hub itself also. Um, T-Hub is what we would like to say is that we're uh, India's fastest growing startup engine uh, and we're catalyzing innovation, scale, and deal flow. Uh, we work closely with many different partners. Uh, the Wadwani Foundation holds a particularly dear uh, place in our heart. Um, and our mission is actually to catalyze the creation of a community, um, but more importantly, to, to find and scale amazing startups. So that's how we are involved with our state government and the central government, and we're doing many different uh, activities. We anchor this ecosystem with a, an, a building that we currently have, which we, we say is the largest building dedicated to entrepreneurship, and we're actually building one of the world's largest uh, buildings. So without further ado, let me take you uh, on the journey of why to register as a startup with Startup India. So as many of you know, um, there are several reasons for it, but here are the basic ones uh, that I want to focus on. Self-certification, startup patent application, um, public procurement, uh, winding up the company, the 10,000 crore fund, and tax exemptions of various types. Now, um, I'm going to go into more detail on each of these as we go along. Um, right now, I'll just go straight through, but uh, you know, at the end, like I said, we'll be taking questions. So first of all, what is a startup? This is a question that um, is very important to us. Um, this is the definition that Startup India itself has, has said. So first of all, you need to be incorporated as either a private limited company, a partnership firm, or limited liability. And they've now included one person companies also. Um, the other big difference is that now they've moved it from that you had to be a company that was less than five years old uh, since registration. It has now moved to up to seven years old, 
And you can also be a biotechnology company that is up to 10 years old, which is a, a big boost to, to people. And the reason for that is, of course, that biotech companies, typically the gestation period is longer. The other one is, of course, that your turnover needs to be less than 25 crores. And uh, they've also expanded the scope of definition. Um, it was that you must be a company working towards innovation. Today, it has been broadened to include a scalable business model with a high potential of either employment generation or wealth creation. And the reason for that, of course, is that many startups don't fall under the traditional definition of innovation as it applies to technology. Uh, scalable business models um, are very, very valuable, uh, um, as a lot of you know, of course. The restrictions, of course, if you're an existing entity and you uh, split off and form a new company, that doesn't count. Or if you're reconstituting your existing business, that also doesn't count. How do you register? Uh, the easy way is to go onto the Startup India portal. Um, it's become very, very simple. Um, I strongly recommend that everybody go onto this site and register. Uh, it is now self, it is a simple form that you have to fill in. You do not need a letter from a government certified incubator which I think is a, a, a really good thing. Um, the process itself has become very simple and the self-certification. Uh, all you need to do is submit the application along with a certificate of incorporation or registration. The one big difference is that you now need to write an essay on the nature of your business and how you believe that your business is either innovative, uh, improves products, and is scalable uh, in terms of employment generation or wealth creation. Uh, but this is mostly, as I said, self-certification. They will not be looking at it unless there's a red flag that comes up. Um, as of today, we've got about uh, uh, just over 1,300 startups that have been recognized. And only 39 of those have been approved for availing tax benefit. Um, I'll tell you a little further along about what you need to do to, to avail the tax benefit. So just registering a startup does not get you tax benefits today, uh, but it does get you the earlier uh, set of benefits that we mentioned. So what is self-certification? The essence of this is that uh, compliance norms have been eased uh, to reduce the regulatory burden on startups so that you can focus on your core business and keep your compli compliance costs low. Uh, the government came up with a list of 36 what they call white category industries. Um, and any startup following the list of 36 white category industries uh, is now exempted from all applicable compliances under three environmental laws, which are the Water uh, and Prevention of Control of Pollution Act, the Water Cess Act, and the Air Prevention, Act, Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act. Um, you can get the details of what those uh, categories are by either going to the portal or I can provide that uh, information later. Um, also, the Ministry of Skill Development has issued an advisory to allow states to allow uh, self-certification of startups for a period of one year with the apprentice rules. Um, and finally, the Ministry of Labor and Employment has also uh, agreed to allow self-certification under six different labor laws. Um, those labor laws being the Building and Other Construction Workers Act, the Interstate Migrant Workmen Act, the Contract Labor Act, the Payment of Gratuity Act, the Employees Provident Funds and Mexicalities Provisions Act and the Employees State Insurance Act. Again, all of these are available online. Um, it does go into a fair amount of detail. Um, the other piece is that uh, dif different states have also com confirmed compliance uh, on these, and there's 13 states that have so far done that. Again, all of this is available on the startup portal. Uh, the other thing that I just want to mention is that the inspection uh, has been, been upped from two years to actually five years, um, not from three. And the only reason that they will inspect is if somebody actually complains about it. Otherwise, they trust that the self-certification that you have, have given is true. So one of the big benefits, of course, is the uh, startup patent application. Um, today, you can actually fast track your patent. As most of you know, Filing a patent is not, has not been easy until now. It takes a considerable amount of time, and it is costly for many people. So the government has gone in and, and created a panel of 423 facilitators for patent and design applications, and 596 facilitators for trademark applications, um, so that you can file your IP applications quickly and to fast track that process. 
the DIPP, the Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion, will bear the facilitation cost on behalf of the startup and provide a rebate of 80% in the statutory fee for filing applications. Um, under the scheme so far, about 200 potent patent applications have been filed already and have received the benefit of up to 80% rebate and free, free legal assistance. And overall, over 350 startups have benefited from the scheme in some form or the other. Uh, 35 startups have also availed of benefits of fees rebate in expedited examination filing fees. So you can actually file an expedition, expedited examination, and that also will be re uh, uh, given back to you. Uh, the trademark rules 2017 were recently amended to provide a 50% rebate in trademark filing fees also to startups. Public procurement is another area that uh, startups that are a little further along could benefit from. So if you're a company that has a product today, um, you can actually apply for contracts with the state and uh, with the state government. Um, the Ministry of Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprises actually relaxed the norms for public procurement, um, and they've notified all central. The round of expenditures also notified all central ministries that the conditions that of prior experience, depending on what the contract was, uh, their levels of prior experience and prior turnover required, those will now be relaxed for startups, subject of course to meeting quality and technical uh, specifications. And the Department of Public Enterprises has also expanded the relaxation to central public sector undertakings. Um, so this is great news for startups that are ready to sell to larger companies like uh, government organizations. This, of course, with the startup world being as precarious as it is, many companies do need to wind up at some point. It has been very, very painful until now, um, and so the government is doing their best to make that much easier. Uh, the Insolvency and ba Bankruptcy Code 2016 was created um, and created a new procedure for voluntary closure, and what they're guaranteeing is that the startup will be wound up within 90 days from making the application, which is a, which is a really big boost for companies that do have to go through the unfortunate step of winding up. Um, provisions re related to liquidation were notified on 9th of December, and the Ministry of Corporate Affairs just notified, on 16th of June, a uh, little while back, notified the relevant sections for the Bankruptcy and Insolvency Code Act pertain to the fast track process also. Uh, this actually applies only to startups, uh, not partnership firms, as defined by DIPP. So these, of course, are all reasons for registering yourself as a startup on the uh, website. There is a 10,000 crore fund, as I'm sure many of you have heard. Uh, the fund of fund actually goes to support innovation-driven startups uh, and is managed by SIDBI. So what happens is that the fund of funds invests in SEBI-registered funds, uh, which in turn will invest into startups. So it doesn't invest into startups directly. Uh, it's a total corpus of 10,000 crores that will be distributed over a period of four years. So the initial corpus is 2,500 crores that has been dispersed to SIDBI, ready to go out to these registered alternative investment funds. So far, um, 623.5 crores have been committed to 17 uh, funds, and about 600 has already been released out of that 623. From those 17 AIS, 65 startups have received funding already, and uh, this is, have actually received funding. There are many more that are in the pipeline that we're aware of. So this is a longer term game. If we fund funds themselves, then that will trickle down to startups is the belief. There are several tax exemptions also available to startups that register on the startup, uh, as a startup. The Finance Act 2016 made a provision for startups to get income tax exemption for three years and a block of five years if they're incorporated between 1st of April 2016 and three years from there, 31st of March 2019. In this last budget, the government increased the period for eligible startups to seven years. So that means that you get tax exemption for three years out of, that seven, out of the first seven, and you get to choose what those three years will be. The other piece of this is that um, in order to get those benefits of tax exemption, you actually need to get a certificate of eligibility from an inter-ministerial board. Um, 
So you must register as a startup, as with everything else, and then you must apply to uh, the Interministerial Board of Certification, which com consists of the Joint Secretary of DIPT, a representative of DST, the Department of Science and Technology, and a representative of the Department of Biotechnology. And what they say is that the certificate will be processed within a period of 10 to 25 days. There's also a proposal to reduce the income tax rates for companies with an annual turnover of less than 50 crores to 25% from 5%. So that's for the startups that are currently making money today. There will also be a certain amount of exemption for, from capital gains that applies obviously um, to the investors. So an, um, a section was introduced which provides exemption of capital gains uh, tax of up to 50 lakhs arising out of transfer of long-term capital asset that is invested then into a fund that's notified by the central government. Also, um, there was a section that was modified in the Income Tax Act to provide exemption from tax on, in on capital gains arising out of sale of your house or land that you own if the amount of net consideration is invested into equity shares of the eligible startup. Um, so that's again, the idea here is of course to try and encourage more people to invest into startups themselves um, and increase the base of people investing into early stage. Finally, um, angel tax also has been removed. So uh, tax exemptions on investments above far far fair market value were introduced on the 14th of June of last year. Um, again, uh, the idea being to um, ease, the risk, ease the burden on people investing into early stage startups. So this will go out and benefit our startups in the long run. So there are many different government schemes that are available today. Um, there are several that apply. Uh, th these are all funding available for startups in various categories. Again, it, I could go into a lot of detail in this, but um, a lot of them will not apply to everybody. So I just want to give you an overview first. So in the sector agnostic section, there's something called PRISM, promoting innovation in individuals, startups, and MSMEs. Um, so basically, under the Invest in India uh, government initiatives, schemes were created to help develop entrepreneurship and help to start, uh, fund startup growth. So um, the idea was, can we create certain funds to help different companies um, of different types? So in the agnostic sector, of course, anybody that is doing database agnostic stuff, device agnostic, data, um, protocol agnostic, anything that doesn't really fit into a particular vertical uh, would be that um, would be agnostic. Uh, of course, within the IT, there are um, two different departments. There's the department of the Ministry of IT and the Department of IT underneath that, um, which has the support for international patent protection uh, and the Electronic Development Fund. For green energy, basically energy companies, uh, there's a sustainable finance scheme, and SIDBI is managing that one. And in healthcare and life sciences, you have the Small Business Innovation Research Initiative. Uh, you have the Biotechnology Ignition Grant. Uh, and these are all Ministry of Science and Technology, of course. Uh, you have the Industry Innovation Program on Medical Electronics. And you have the Venture Capital Assistance Scheme. So I'll go into a little more detail on each of these. So in the general sector, you have, as I said, the PRISM initiative. So the major objective of PRISM is to promote innovation uh, by providing grants, technical guidance, mentoring from proof of concept to testing, patenting, fabrication of working models. So any Indian citizen, including students, can actually be a, a, a eligible for this one. Uh, there are two different categories um, of grants here. There's the first one, which is proof of concept or prototypes, um, costing up to five lakhs. And the grant is two lakhs or 90% of the total project cost, whichever is less. Category two of these is fabrication of the working model. Um, people who are in the fabrication process, in, in the fabrication stage or are doing uh, process know-how or testing their space or patenting uh, their application. There the project cost can be anywhere from 5 lakhs to 35 lakhs. And the grant you would get would be 20 lakhs or 90% of the total project cost, whichever is less. Then you have uh, phase two, which is um, for guys that already have 
demonstrate a proof of concept with the support of a government institution or agency. In this case, the project cost could be anywhere between 35 lakhs and 1 crore. Uh, up, to five, up to 50 lakhs of that will, will, you will get back, um, up to 50% of the total project cost. So the next uh, assistance is growth capital and equity startup assistance. So uh, it's a public sector, basically it's a SIDBI um, grant from the Small Industries Development Bank of India. And again, what they're trying to do is provide assistance in form of mezzanine of convertible instruments, uh, debt and equity in de deserving cases. So the eligibility for this is that you must have uh, three years of profitability and two years of satisfactory banking credit track record. Now, of course, there's not going to be as many startups that fall into this fold, but if you do, it's a good scheme. So the idea is that they will bridge the gap in the means of finance for scaling up an expansion of, or even modernization of your project. Um, and what you'll get is long-term structured assistance, especially for investments in intangible assets. Um, so in, in theory, you can avoid, you can raise higher debt and avoid the complexities of enterprise valuation, exit issues, et cetera, that are associated with equity investment. In the IT sector, uh, the Ministry of IT uh, obviously has the support for international patent protection, and this is an extension of the patent protection that we talked about earlier. In this case, what they're trying to do is to provide financial support to technology startups for international patent filing. And the idea is to encourage innovation, obviously, and recognize the value of global IP. So if you believe that your patent has international um, uh, interest or rather uh, international applicability, you can uh, you can actually apply for this. The eligibility is that you must be in the in information ICT and E uh, sector, so information communication technology and electronics, and the reimbursement will be limited to a total of 15 lakhs per invention, or 50% of the total expenses incurred in filing and processing of patent application, up to a grant whichever is lesser. So the other one is the Electronic Development Fund policy, <clears throat> EDS. So this again is actually a fund of funds, and the idea is again to participate in professionally managed daughter funds, which will provide risk capital to companies developing new technologies in the area of electronics, nanoelectronics, and information technology specifically. So here, um, uh, again, the idea is can the government seed capital out to funds that will invest into startups. In this case, specifically for riskier technology. In the energy sector, if you're playing in uh, clean energy, in, uh, renewable energy, or even non-renewable uh, energy, uh, the Small Industries Development Bank of India, again, is looking at sustainable finance. So the purpose is to assist the entire value chain of energy efficiency, cleaner production, and sustainable development projects which, which lead to significant improvement in either energy efficiency or cleaner production, um, specifically for startups and MSMEs. So what they count as renewable energy projects are solar power plants, wind energy generators, mini high dell power plants, biomass gas pipelines, uh, etc. <clears throat> and any kind of potential cleaner production investment, including waste management also. So in this case, again, uh, you need to be either an MSE or a startup, uh, and hope, and they would ideally like you to be supplying your product to other MSEs and startups as well. The grant is a is typically assistance by way of either a term loan or working capital. In the healthcare space, moving on, uh, Ministry of Science and Technology has quite a few different schemes. I've uh, listed out the four biggest ones. We have the Small Business Innovation Research Initiative. And this is basically an enabling platform for organizations to realize their potential in terms of product and process development and take them to market. So in this case, uh, it gives that financial support to early stage and proof of concept uh, uh, ideas for innovations based on a valid hypothesis. And the idea is to uh, give you affordable product development and large scale technology refinement or validation of the technology at a pilot scale and to platform technologies. The next one is the Biotech Ignition Grant. 
So the Biotech Ignition Grant Scheme uh, aims again to support exciting ideas in biotechnology, uh, which they believe have an unmet need for funding and mentorship. So in this case, the eligibility is you need to be an Indian citizen, you need to be physically incubated in a government recognized incubator and get a recommendation. And technology ideas in this case um, relating to either medical or health, biotechnology, biopharma, medical devices, biomaterials, diagnostics. Um, and it also goes out to agri-biotech um, and even animal and marine biotechnology. Um, it applies to industrial and environmental biotechnology also. Um, biomass value addition uh, that's happening via biotechnology. Uh, Biotech-based services and reagents and supplies, bioinformatics and bio-IT interfaces. So here the grants are up to 50 lakh for research projects with commercialization and with a duration of up to 18 months. So the industry innovation program on medical electronics, um, the idea here is to promote and foster cutting edge technologies in the field of medical electronics. Um, excuse me for one second. Uh, sorry about that. Um, what I was saying is that the uh, IIPME aims to promote and foster cutting edge technologies, um, cutting edge technologies in the field of medical electronics. Hello? Okay, I'm going to assume you can still hear me. It keeps cutting out here. Um, so uh, what I was saying is that the IIPME aims to promote and foster cutting edge technology in the field of medical electronics. The eligibility in this case is Indian startups that are less than three years old, um, obviously, uh, have 51% ownership by the founders, uh, and ideally has DSIR recognition. So the grant is uh, a seed grant of 50 lakhs, for 18 months. Uh, if you're in the early transition phase, you'll get a mix of a grant and loan for 24 months. Um, finally, the uh, Venture Capital Assistance Scheme, SPARCH. So the scheme intends to create a pool of social innovators in the biotech arena who will identify the specific needs and gaps in healthcare and bring the cost, bring cost effective healthcare to vulnerable populations. In this case, the eligibility is that you should be either in the in the idea to proof of concept stage. And any biotech uh, startup that's Indian, incorporated on the Indian Companies Act, um, applies. Also, um, you should have at least half of your uh, people, half of the people within the company need to be Indian. If you're in the proof of concept to validation stage, um, it's fairly similar. In fact, it is exactly the same. Uh, the applicant, of course, needs to own the background IP on which the proposal is made. And the grant in aid assistance, if you're in the idea to proof of concept stage, is uh, up to 50 lakhs for a period of up to 18 months, and up to 50 lakhs over a period of 24 months if you're in proof of concept to validation stage. So uh, the last thing I want to tell you uh, before I open up for question and answers is, that you can go to startupindiahub.org.in. Uh, this just launched last week. Uh, in fact, I took part in the panel that uh, took place just before we launched the website. Uh, the website actually has details about every single one of these schemes. Um, it also has a, a learning uh, uh, component. And uh, access, you can access resources like market research reports and tools and templates. And finally, you can actually look and see uh, a list of startups, mentors, investors, and incubators, and all of the things that we talked about. So for example, for IP, who are all the facilitators in your region that could help you with the patent application, um, et cetera. Uh, it is just, it's just been launched, and so you can't find literally everything there, but most things are up already. Um, so whatever you need clarifications on that you don't get from this session today, uh, you will be able to get uh, on that website. Um, it's very comprehensive, and it's getting stronger every day. So that's what I want to start with right now. But what I was thinking is if we could move on to um, 
get some question and answers from you guys, that would be great. Uh, there are quite a few questions pouring in, and I would request the participants to kindly send me the questions over chat, or you can even raise your hand so that I can connect you di directly. So I'm, I'm now seeing the hand raised for Jayesh and Nitin. So I'm opening the line first for Nitin, followed by Jayesh. Nitin, you can just speak out. Yeah, Nitin, we can hear hello? you. Yeah, yeah, hello. Yeah, Nitin, hello? Can, we can hear you. We can, you can ask your question to Srinivas. Hi, Nitin. Hello, Nitin. Okay, so I'm not seeing, I'm not getting, I'm hearing from Nitin. So the question that he had asked was, how many days is required to register startup under Startup India program? <laughs> so if you're registering just for, uh, if you're just registering as a startup for those initial set of um, uh, benefits that we talked about, you just go online and it's a form that you can fill out yourself. Um, it's actually pretty much instant. Uh, you'll get a, you fill out the form, uh, it's self-certified, so you will get recognized pretty much immediately. If you need a certificate, that takes approximately two or three days. Of course, if you want uh, to be registered as a startup for tax benefits, as we mentioned earlier, that's a longer process. You need to finish out this one first, I get registered as a startup, and then apply to an inter-ministerial board. Manish, are you ready? I have opened your line, so you can ask your question to Srinivas. Oops. Hi, Manish. Hi, Manish. Manish, can you hear me? Jesh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, Jesh, you can ask, ask your question next. Okay. So, I just wanted to have a quick uh, check in terms of for the Startup India. We are not yet registered as a company, uh, but we are into a medical domain where we have uh, created a product that is uh, uh, touching with the medical or healthcare industry and it is built on the uh, IT platform. So under which category will be will we can apply for the patent and how we can really take it forward from here because we are not yet registered as a company in Startup India. So your, your, your question is you haven't registered as a, as a startup, that's number one. Um, yeah. Go, go and do that immediately, <laughs> that's the easy part. Um, yeah. Right. Uh, the second part is that um, so you're asking under what category would you get a patent? Yeah, we have a product that is a patent. Uh, uh, yeah, we want to apply for say copyright or patent. So what will be the process to that? So the process is that you uh, should go and find a, a patent, uh, um, a, a patent facilitator on the site. Uh, so if you okay. go again to Startup India, there's a list of. Um, I forget, I think it's underneath, um, let me tell you. So if you go into the action plan, um, actually it's, it's fairly easy, just use the search bar. You will find a list of facilitators for patents, right? What you'll do is you'll go and find one that's near you and um, you will go to that person, tell them I'm a startup, I've registered under Startup India, here is my certificate, uh, and he will figure out, you know, how to file your post patent, of course, that is, separate uh, from this conversation, but he will get you the rebate of up to 80% of that cost. So the key is to find that facilitator that will work with you. Okay. And it's, uh, will it be falling in the category of medical or uh, innovation? Because there are, in the slides you have shown two different places where we can apply. One is, uh, I think, uh, uh, medical and another one is uh, IT. Yep. No, Are you talking about uh, for patent? Yeah, for the patent. 
for you, it doesn't really matter. So um, anybody that registers as a startup um, is, a, is eligible for this uh, patent, um, regardless of whether you're an IT company or you're a healthcare company, right? Um, mm -hmm. The reason I put those other things for healthcare specifically is yeah. because there are certain healthcare specific funds available. But as, mm -hmm. a, as it applies to patents, it doesn't really matter. Okay. 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 And we are approaching CII for getting this patent and copyright, and they are asking us the complete uh, details in terms of the way it has been coded and the programming and other things. So, is it okay to share those details with the CII team? Because I think they are also reviewing our proposal. Hello? Hello? Yeah, sorry, I missed the first part of the question. Could you repeat it? You've so we, CII. Have, uh, we have approached to CIA for applying the copyright and the patent already. Okay. And they are asking us the details about the, the complete details in terms of the algorithm that has been there. So is it okay that we should, we can move ahead with them or should we just get this startup and complete it and then apply for it? So I'm not sure, I, I didn't know, first of all, I, I apologize, I didn't know that CIA even filed a patent application. Uh, they may be helping you by taking you to a patent attorney. So they are the copyright, they, we have applied for copyright, not patent. CIA is in the Confederation of Indian Industries? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Confederation of Indian Industry, CIA. Right. So, so yes, they have a, a division that uh, helps with patenting and uh, trademark copyrights, etc. Um, they may also be recognized. Honestly, I, I'll be honest and tell you, I don't know if they're recognized or not. I'm assuming they probably are. But you should ask that question of them, number one. Number two is if you want that uh, reimbursement of your patent fees, uh, you definitely need to be registered as a startup regardless of who your um, uh, a lawyer is. But you should definitely go and register first. Uh, now the other question you asked is, is it okay to share your algorithm, right? That's yeah. A, that is, that is a, so this is a question that everybody who is going for a patent asks. How much information do I share um, with my patent attorney, right? So clearly you want to trust your patent attorney such that you know that he's not going to share it with other people. Mm -hmm. but when what goes what into the patent application itself needs to be enough that it, it's clear that it is unique. It's enough that it describes what the novelty is without giving away the entire secret sauce. You don't want someone to be able to just take that and, and do everything they can with it, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the idea is how can you uh, bear the skeleton without giving them the entire flesh? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So first thing as a process, we need to first get ourselves registered in Startup India for that company that we have formed, and then apply for patent. We see the near around the team, like we are situated in Indore MP, so we need to see who are the agency who can help us. Yes, I mean like I said, there are, there are over 400 patent attorneys scattered across the country. There's a strong chance there will be somebody in Indore uh, or nearby, I'm assuming. Um, and then, like I said, have that conversation with CII and tell them, look, I want a, I want a reimbursement of my fees. Can you do that for me? Mm -hmm. Yep. Through the Startup India scheme. Right, right. And we have uh, formed this company in April 2017. But as a product was envis uh, envisioned by us some a couple of years back, and that has been invested and funded by internal sources. So once we are going to be, I mean, so uh, from our side, what will be the kind of a formation that we will be having? It will be considered from the time that we have started transaction, means paying to our employees, etc. Is that the consideration? Because company was formed, say, maybe in August 2016. Since then we have been investing. But only since April is where we formed the company with all the legal documents banks and then started paying to our employees. Absolutely. So if you look at the uh, condition, it's since registration. You 
may have been working on it beforehand, but it's, it's the time that you registered your company. There are Hello, I can't hear anything breaking. Hello. Can you hear me now? Hello, Srinivas. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Please continue. Okay, so what I'm saying was, if you look at the, uh, the definition um, of a startup, it is less than seven years, it's registration. So registration is the event that you're looking at, not the time that you start to work on your idea. Okay, so whatever has been the yeah, Jayesh, please continue with your question. Yeah, so whatever investment that will be taken into consideration for the startup India will be the time since when we are going to get registered us, not whatever investment has happened before. The startup India, in terms of registering as a startup, doesn't count. Uh, your investment at all, right? That doesn't apply anywhere. They're only looking at your turnover and yet they're looking at the time since registration of your company. They're the only two things that they care about when it comes to registration, uh, when it comes to registering as a staff. Hello? Hello. So now moving to the next question from Shrey. Shreya has, Shre has uh, like come back uh, saying that all these benefits seem to be more for manufacturing oriented startups. What are the specific benefits for service oriented startups? So um, again, one of the, um, if you look again at the definition of a startup, right, it has to be working towards innovation or improving products or services. Or it has to be scalable as a business model with the high potential of employment generation or wealth creation. If you're a typical services company, this will not apply to you. Um, you will not be able to register yourself as a startup purely as a service uh, business unless there is clear innovation uh, involved. So that is a, uh, that's a really big point. Uh, the other one is, you know, as a startup, as I would say, all of these sort of uh, things are there. So your self certification is a very big deal. Uh, your patent reimbursement, uh, the fact that it, it, you can sell your, your um, product or your offering to public uh, sector you, uh, undertaking. Um, if ever anything goes down, you wind up a company and all the sorts of tax exemptions, if that applies to you. These are the big ones right now. Um, several others have been asked for. We've asked for many other incentives for startups, but right now these are one of the things There is one question from uh, Shushil. He asks, uh, Hi, Mr. Srinivas. Is it advisable for pre-revenue startup to register? We are registered as private limited in March 2017, expecting revenues in August for our SaaS product. Um, are they registered already? Or is the question? <laughs> um, he said, is it worth registering all you ask, right? Yes, so, uh, so Sushil asks, is it advisable for pre-revenue startups to register? We are registered as private limited in March 2017, expecting revenues in August for our SaaS product. Right. I mean, there are two ways to look at it. One is that if you register, you will get uh, listed on the government website um, as a startup that is a registered startup and therefore Investors could be looking at you. Customers could be looking at you. If something, if, if those are something of value to you, that would be one reason for registering. Um, if those don't apply and you don't need a, a patent application, you don't need the money reimbursed on the patent application. You're not. You obviously don't have a product that you're saying free revenue and you book in August. Maybe you don't need to register them. This is, a, this is a question to ask yourself, really, but yes, I agree. If you're not, if you don't need the visibility and you don't need um, health certification, it's not necessary. And the other big one, of course, uh, thinking about it, is also the, um, uh, the health certification part. The fact that you have zero inspection. Now, maybe you're not complying with your labor laws already, uh, but this is an easy way of making sure that doesn't happen. It, 
it's not a great incentive, I agree, but uh, it could be applicable. Uh, Akash asks, could an LLP be considered eligible for being registered as startup? Would what be considered eligible? Uh, an LLP. An LLP? Yeah. Um, LLP is actually, uh, uh, yes, absolutely. Again, private limited company, partnership firm, limited liability partnership, LLP, or a one-person company, which is a new form. So these are three, uh, these are four types of companies that can be uh, registered as a startup. Nitin, I have opened your line. Can you ask your question? Nitin? Once again, we have not got connected to Nitin. Yeah. There is uh, one question from Manish and uh, he asks, in case of applications under various schemes, what is the process of grievance redressal? in case there is an inordinate delay. Specifically, in the case of SIDBI, 10,000 crore fund, where disbursement happens through the bank branches, how would the process work? That's a, that's, a really, that's a really good question. And I wish I had an amazing answer for you, but I don't. Um, the truth is this. The schemes have been created. Uh, the money is being dispersed from... Uh, the, the various ministries to the entities that are supposed to disperse these funds. But from that point forward, there is no, there's been no advancement in the mechanism to ensure that that money is dispersed quickly. Uh, that is the truth. Uh, having said that, uh, the various uh, departments are very, very um, aware that some of these things are getting very slowed down. And so if you actually complain on the Sun Sinker portal again, they do take these very seriously. And they will try and go to bat for you. Um, so that, that, that's good. There's definitely an intent to speed things up. But the truth of the matter is that the, the execution part of this is still the same. So the, the only thing I can say, as I said, is if you're having a problem, complain about it on the, uh, on the portal. Uh, Kirit, I have opened your line. You may please ask your question. Hello, good afternoon. Um, uh, is IT service company can be get like qualification on the startup? IT services again only if you are innovative. So you IT services company, company. Like, yeah, yeah, outsourcing company. If you're just a plain outsourcing company, then I'm afraid the answer is no. There has to be an element of innovation or a scalable business model. Okay. Thank you. In, in your case, there would be MSME um, rules that would apply, and some of those are also being changed, but that's outside the scope of this webinar, I'm afraid. Nitin, I have once again tried to open yeah. your line. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you well. Clear. Yeah, man. We, yeah, we already have applied for the Startup India program uh, in the back three to four days back, but still waiting for a certificate. We know, want to know exactly how much time required to get process all the uh, forms in process by the government of India. Did you apply online through the portal? Yes, I'm on apply online on the portal, Startup India portal. Without, we are not trying to get the exemption in tax benefit. Yes, yes. Just. Yeah, we just want to uh, register as a startup India, as a startup in the startup India program, not looking out for the stack exemption. Okay, you're not looking for the stack exemption. So, so yeah. technically you are actually, it's self certification, so technically you are already certified. If you need a certificate though, that will come in the post and that, um, like I said, it's supposed to take two days uh, of processing on their end, plus whatever time it takes to deliver to you. Um, okay. So depending on where you're based, it should be there you know, the next couple of days, that's too. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. There's a question from Narendra. He asks, does government have any inclination towards innovative ideas only? 
I intend to start up a company that provides product rental or product review platform. Will this idea be accepted as startup? If yes, which category will it fall in? Could you just repeat what kind of company um, he said he was? Uh, he says that he wants to start up a company that provides product rental or product review platform. So, um, I'm not sure, that's not enough detail for me to see if it's innovative or not, but assuming that he, I mean, he asked the question, is it only for innovative companies, right? He did say that, right? Yeah. Yeah, so the answer is yes. All of these are only for innovative companies. They are not for uh, regular companies. Um, the regular companies, again, fall under the MSME category. And there are a whole bunch of incentives coming up for MSMEs also. Uh, the only thing is that I wouldn't know about those, unfortunately, because I only work with uh, startups themselves uh, that are innovative. But they do exist. Um, you'd have to go to the MSME portal for that one. Participants, if you have any questions, please let me know across chat or put your hands up so that I can connect you to Srinivas directly. We have 10 minutes more to go, so maybe you can just ask your questions. Okay, there's one question, um, question from Archana Sharma. I opened your line. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I can hear you, Archana. Uh, hello, uh, Srinivas, actually I joined this webinar so late, so I missed the slide on self-certification. So can you please throw some light on this, what's the difference between self-certification and the other one, which was there the previous day? Self-certification, um, basically, um, what it was earlier was, I mean, there's a whole bunch of um, uh, rules that you have to certify yourself under as a regular company, right? Um, then the labor, uh, there are labor laws, um, there are environmental laws, um, etc. Basically, if you want me to repeat it, there are, um, if you, what, what sort of startup is yours? Actually, uh, mine is a service-based startup and uh, the concept is also quite different. So my next question was on to the same thing, like which sector should I fall into? I'm working on thought technology. So uh, I have trademarked this brand, Thought Technology, and uh, now, uh, as of now at this stage, I am uh, providing my workshops on thinking skills under the uh, brand Thought Technology, and in the upcoming times, I'll be going for the manufacturing of the devices as well into this. Okay, so um, the ones that would apply to you are uh, in theory, that there are uh, six labor laws that you no, no longer need to uh, comply with, uh, as in you don't need to be inspected for those. Um, so basically, uh, with those six labor laws, you can, this is again, once you've certified this, you've actually gone to self-certification. Um, you could go to the standard with your portal, and six labor laws, um, you will not have to go on the inspection anymore. You can just certify to them that you are complying with these things and for a period of five years, it was three years earlier, for a period of five years, they will not come and inspect you unless somebody complains. Um, sometimes, in, in, depending on the industry that you're in, um, uh, that could be a problem, having these labor um, um, inspectors coming to look at you and see whether you're complying or not. So that's a big, big uh, difference. There's another one that says that for a period of one year, um, these apprenticeship rules have been changed. But again, honestly, I don't know the answer to that one. Um, I, I can look at um, And the other ones that don't apply to you are called environmental laws. So water, um, prevention, control of pollution, um, etc. But they don't apply to you. So for you, it's the, it's the six labor laws that you would be self-certified in. Um, meaning that you just have to submit an online declaration, no inspector will come to you anymore. Okay. And if you want me to tell you which so the do you know the different lab, uh, the labor laws, would that help to tell you what those are?
Uh, can, you, can you please repeat your last line? I, I missed it. Do you want to know which are the labor laws that um, uh, are now self-certified? Yes, yes, yes. So one is the Payment of Gratuity Act. Mm -hmm. There's the Contract Labor Act. The Employees Provident Fund and Miscellaneous Provisions Act. The Employees State Insurance Act. And the Building uh, and Construction Workers Act. Uh, and the Interstate Migrant Workmen Act. So these, these six of them um, are now self-certified. You just have to put out an online declaration saying, I'm complying with these, and uh, no one will bother you. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. I think this, please, uh, you have to be very quick. If you have any more questions, Send it across through chat or raise your hand. I can connect you to Srinivas. Also, Srinivas is there on WFNEN mentoring platform. So if you want to request mentorship from him, it's an easy way to connect with him and get your queries answered or take your mentorship in the long run. So you can also come to the website wfnen.org and register and take mentorship from Universe. So with no more questions coming in, okay, so there's one question from Sushil. Sushil, if possible, I'm going to open your line. Yeah, Sushil? Yeah, I'm audible. Yeah, you're audible. Let's continue. Yeah, hi, Srinivas. Uh, we are working on a SaaS product. And uh, uh, let's say that in the market there are many SaaS products available. Like there is Zoho and there is uh, Freshdesk, and, which is now Freshworks. Uh, we have been able to identify one niche area wherein there is no SaaS made by any player in the market. Okay. Now okay. we have contacted our prospects, we have told them about our idea that we will be making a SaaS for you uh, which can be uh, accessed by multiple clients Okay, in the same space. Uh, since there is no SaaS product in this space, is it possible to patent such thing? Just wanted to confirm. So the patenting itself is a complex area, right? Um, software uh, in India cannot be patented. I'm sure you've heard this before. Uh, having said that, there are ways to get around it, and we're actually working with the government to try and broaden that, their scope so that we can save in Australia and India also. Um, but as of today, that's a very difficult proposition. Um, you'd have to get the advice of a professional patent lawyer for that. Uh, the other option, of course, is always to patent in other countries. Uh, that's the fact that a lot of people say. But within India, honestly, I'm not qualified in saying that. We need a longer conversation with you about the specific nature of your uh, innovation. Okay, okay. So basically, softwares in India are not much uh, prone to getting uh, patented. That's that's why. Unfortunately, the... not not right now. So it will um, be very difficult like to save the product. Yeah, please, please, please go on. No, yeah, as of today, officially, you cannot patent software itself. Okay. Um, but like I said, there are ways to, um, I wouldn't say get around it, but there are ways to patent certain ideas within your software. Uh, but you need the help of a professional patent attorney for that. Um, and as I was mentioning earlier, just look at the list of facilitators that are recognized by the government so you can actually get that reimbursed if that's what you take for it. But I would strongly recommend you get the advice of a, of, of a professional uh, IP lawyer. Got it, got it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Hello. So any, more, any more questions? Can we very quickly get more questions if there's something in your mind that Srinivas can take you through? Uh, 
find that. So we are concluding this uh, webinar on understanding Startup India policies. And it was a pleasure having the webinar session with Srinivas. I truly appreciate the way you had covered so many topics in detail and also cleared our doubts on the same. And I would also like to express my appreciation to the participants on behalf of Vadwani Foundation National Entrepreneurship Network and uh, for your dedicated, dedicated participation on the webinar. And we will be having another webinar very shortly and would like to bring to you another enriching experience. So wish you success in your endeavor. Thank you for joining. And you can find the recording and the presentation on the website. So would request you to check by tomorrow so that it, is, it would be already uploaded in the website for you to refer to. So Srinivas, thank you once again. Thank, thank you. Um, for some reason, it went on to mute. I apologize. All right. Uh, thank you. It's been a, an interesting session. Sure. Thank you so much. Bye.